I'm excited to have the chance to speak with you today as part of the Plastic SEM product launch. I like building useful software. I find process questions interesting, but to me, agile software development practices and software configuration management each help establish a framework where people can focus on developing software without worrying about process. Today I'd like to spend a few minutes talking to you about the role of SEM practices in helping you develop software effectively. When I wrote the SEM Patterns book with Brad Appleton, I wanted to focus on how to use software configuration management and version control to improve productivity and collaboration. In many organizations, SEM is an arcane discipline that is focused on stakeholders other than those who rely on the system most, developers. A good SEM process can help you work better as a team and help your team be more agile. An ineffective one can slow down development and be an obstacle to progress. Likewise, the tools you use, while secondary to decisions about the way you work, can affect how effective your SEM process is. A good SEM tool helps you work more effectively as a team and allows you to focus on your work and not the mechanics of the SEM process. Plastic, S Plastic SEM was built with effective teamwork in mind. While there are many aspects of software configuration management, the first concept that comes to mind for many is version control. And with version control, it commits of code line management. Developers commit changes to a code line and update their workspaces from a code line. The main role of your SEM process is to facilitate integrations, and you want commits and updates to be frequent to avoid complicated integrations. Frequent commits also give developers the full benefit of having a history of their work so that it's easy to revert to a known state when a coding experiment goes wrong. So you want processes and policies that encourage frequent integration. The simplest SEM model is to commit changes into a single code line. Working on a single code line is simple in many ways, but it requires discipline to keep that single code line with frequent commits stable. We refer to a code line where people have practices such as tests and a discipline of pre-commit builds in place as an active development line. Not every team can maintain this discipline, and even for those who can, there are legitimate reasons to work on more than one code line. Once developers realize the challenges of working on a single code line, they quickly become interested in the way a tool supports branching. The first question people often ask about a tool is how it supports branching, and that, that question is best answered in the context of understanding why you want to branch. Branching is a technique for enabling parallel development. When you branch, you create a code line that is a copy of its parent and that it can evolve independently. A branch allows you to work on a variation of the code without affecting or being affected by changes in a parent code line. The ability to work in parallel can be an effective tool for enhancing productivity, it can also be a cause of bottlenecks and frustration. Branching can be a very useful mechanism for making your development process more effective if you do it the right ways, with the right tools, and for the right reasons. A poorly applied branching strategy can have the opposite effect, decreasing your velocity and making it harder for team members to work together. So while how a tool supports branching is important, it's more important to understand why you are branching and if branching is as helpful as you'd like. Branches are helpful if they enable you to work more quickly than a single code line would. And I'd like to spend the next few minutes talking about what branching is and describing some basic branching patterns. A common branching pattern is to, is to create a branch when you release software. The release line allows you to deliver fixes to the release software quickly without having to worry about the impact of new development work on code. Most of the time, a release branch is the right choice for managing changes to release. There are alternatives, but each adds its own cost. For example, you can defer the fix until the next code line is scheduled. This will only be a viable option if the problem isn't critical or if the team releases software frequently. In many cases, teams don't release software frequently enough to do this. Another option is to fix the problem in the existing code, code base and release early. This can work only if you have a continuous quality assurance cycle that ensures that your code is always ready for release. While many teams strive to do this, few are able to. A release line is just one branching pattern. There are, many, there are other times when you might benefit from more than one code line to allow for parallel work. While the mechanics of creating a branch are the same, you can classify branches in a number of ways. But the way I find most useful is by identifying the purpose of the branch. For example, another useful branching pattern is the task branch. A task branch 
provides a place to work on a feature or a problem, and I'll say more about task branches in a bit. A variation of the task branch is a private branch you create for an experiment, but not sharing the code until you are done. This is very much like a task branch, but you might have a different policy such as not requiring a continuous integration build for that branch. Another branching pattern is the stabilization or release prep branch, which is an alternative to a code freeze which some organizations use to get code ready to ship after it is feature complete. The main thing that distinguishes branch types is their purpose and the associated rules for working on those branches, but from a tool perspective, all branches are basically the same. While branches can be useful, they have costs that you need to be aware of. Team software development is a balance between in integration and isolation. Branching can be a powerful tool for isolating change. But be aware that not all changes that are isolated are as isolated as they first appear. For example, much of the time when you fix a problem in a release code line, you will also want to address the problem in your new development code line. So by working on a branch, you have created the need to do the same work twice. And the more branches you have, the greater the risk of distraction and reduced velocity. So it's good to consider alternatives before creating branches by rote. I'd like to say a bit more about task branches. In the simplest case, you create a task branch to work on a feature or issue or set of issues. A task branch is different from a release branch because it has a fixed lifetime. Once the task is done, the branch ends and the changes are always integrated back into the parent code line. Not every development task needs a task branch and depending on your SCM tool, the overhead of creating the branch might be more than seems worthwhile. If the overhead is small, some of the reasons to use a task branch are, are for changes that will involve more than one chain set, complex changes that will take more than a short amount of time, or tasks that involve more than one person, or tasks for projects that have long dura duration automated test suites so that you can do stage integrations. The challenge when working on a task branch is that the task is that the branch will be out of sync with the main code line at the end of the task and the process of integrating the change back into the code line will be complex. To avoid this, while working on the task branch, integrate changes from the main development line frequently. This will help to ensure that the merge at the end of the task is simple. And consider creating a continuous integration build for your branch if it's easy to do. This will ensure that your code is always working and keep the duration of the branches short. It's important to be aware of the costs and benefits of working on a branch before you create one. The answer may be different for each team and each environment. Let's review the alternatives for creating a release leech line branch. Rather than creating a release branch, you can refer changes to an early, later release, or you can ship a release early. Before ruling any option out, analyze the costs and benefits. In the case of delivering a fix to release code, a release line is the right choice for many teams, but be conscious of times when the release line seems to slow down your team. This might be a sign that you need to evaluate your development process more closely. Software configuration management practices and tools are part of developer's basic toolkit. Like all tools, the right tool used correctly can help you get your job done. The wrong one, used without understanding, can distract you from your goal. Branching can help you to improve your velocity, but be sure to be aware of the reasons you're branching and always ask yourself if the branch will deliver enough value to justify the cost. And always test and integrate frequently to avoid surprises. And remember, the real goal in SCM environment is to help your team to work more effectively. I hope this information can help you use Plastic SCM more effectively. Thank you.